Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Attack on Productions. Today I bank off for being joined by a whole cast of people, that being Jimmy, Jake, Tanner, and like always, Fluff. Howdy. What's, what's going on, y'all? Hello. What up, people? And today's matchup is me playing Tricolor 21 versus one of Fluff's, if I recall correctly, all-time favorites, Jiren. Yeah, absolutely. So like kind of a different, a different take on it, but yeah, go continue. And so, like always, there's buttons. Feel free to click them. They're there for a reason. But let's take it away. I feel like, like ever since I called out Bancroft for being so peppy in any video that he's playing in, I think he's, like, toned it down now. I, I, I respect that. I I still I don't think stay, I still say what I stated, that I think you're taking that one match out of, like, perspective. Because, like, I always do it. I'm a little tired right now, so, I mean, that might be it. Yeah, I keep it is. that way. It is pretty late. I want to apologize for that. So, so never use the word peppy to describe me. <laughs> it's just inaccurate. That's yeah. It, there's like a dichotomy between video Bancroft and like shop Bancroft. Yeah, like Bancroft puts on like a YouTube face, and then like at the shop, he's just like, oh, uh, I'm gonna play uh, twenty one. <laughs> <laughs> is his face even in these videos? Anyway, uh, Fluff, how has Jiren been since what? It's been since set nine he came out? Uh, yeah, came out in set nine. I think I played him very briefly around set ten. Like, I maybe brought him one week, but I brought the very traditional successor route. Um, you'll see as this goes along, it's really not a Universe 11 deck. It, it, it's really more centered around just using the small Universe 11 pieces to enable and trigger Jaren's big effect, and then using good dot yellow stuff to kind of advantage the playing field. And the deck is kind of crazy. It runs essentially four win conditions inside the main deck. So win condition one is high to mastery. Win condition two is Zeno Cell. Win condition three is Mira, Creator, Absorbed, Cooler, and Champa. And then win condition four is the 12 drop Jiren. So it wants to kind of advantage the leader's skill and avoid awakening as long as possible, which is why you saw me save two open energy in my turn to use the Bardock to combo to advantage. And I'm trying to not give Bancroft a ton of resources by doing all this. And I'm just trying to tap everything down on his side. I tried to play that Bardock there, but couldn't because Bancroft didn't have three energy. I forgot about that little minutia, so we didn't do it, but kind of spoiled that I have the Bardock. I also run the Goku as a fantastic. It basically makes it a three card, two energy Zeno Cell in this deck because you do uh, Bardock, Father and Son, tap a card. That triggers the auto on both. Goku, Father and Son, and Bergama. And then that's your 12 to make your big boy. My goodness. Yeah. And I got lucky enough to see three of my Super 17s by turn three, which is pretty awesome to charge with. Um, so I said tricolor earlier. The So last week, I made this 21 deck, uh, blue-green, and it was pretty aggro but I had a feeling it could go further and with some of the comments we were receiving I was like oh yeah I forgot about that and I could play that hang on and I went back to the drawing board and threw yellow in it now I don't need to charge in yellow energy because the Goku hit requires a blue to play and the Android 13 requires a green to play so there's my yellows and the Android 14 and 15 is free to combo with as long as your leader is Android. So it works out great on that part as well. And I absolutely love being able to play this Android 17 on the board because it allows me to KO the problem cards, which is your double strike. Yep. Which is really good. It makes me play additionally harder to be able to play some of my win conditions. And really, it, it makes me waste a lot of resources if I want to try to get rid of that Android 17, he's got a big body and you have plenty of negates. You have plenty of combo power to keep him alive. And you're actually just swinging with your other cards because I'm trying to avoid awakening here. 
um, because I really don't want to awaken until my turn. I want to be able to make Height of Mastery or spend energy, awaken, and get the full value out of it. So I don't want to awaken at this point, but I guess I'm going to go on ahead. Um, I awaken there just to keep myself from having to combo to take the damage. And even if I want to combo here to just save from having to take the damage and keep moving at four life, this essentially buys me to turn seven. And I was it, pushing to get you to use that effect practically early on. Yeah. It's very odd watching uh, watching a yellow deck tap out as much as you have. I know you left energy open for the uh, for the Bardock, but like it, I did almost made me clinch up when I seen you tap three in yellow to play Path to Greatness like that. The, like, deck, the deck, surprisingly enough, runs zero negates. Um, and, like, that, you, you're allowed to do that with Topo because it Jiren. basically has built, or Jiren, same character, fuck off. Uh, one's furry and cooler than the muscle man. Yeah, uh, agreed. <laughs> I think we just learned something about fluff, never mind. Uh, yeah, but you like you have the access to do that with Jiren, which is so hard to wrap your brain around, especially if you're like a Mecha Frieza player like me, where seeing yellow and seeing the cards that you're playing, I automatically think like, oh, bro, you have to chill out. You're already at four life, and you're you're about to get clapped. Like, you know. Well, Jiren can literally just turn off damage. Yep. Um, yeah. Oh. And tr so. I sent to be an boosted the Goku hit because I felt like this is my last attack for this turn. I'll keep the blocker uh, block on his turn and then restand the Goku hit. And then when I used the uh, say the draw two apes, I, I in our game I was like I regret doing this because <laughs> I could have pushed more with what I had in yeah. my hand as well. Yeah, and that that is essentially the way you want to play. You want to use kind of like around turn three, you want the turn that you awaken, you want to be able to defend hard, whether that be like Bardock's, Bergamo's to tap everything down reactively, Poutine's to tap reactively, use your Vaughn blockers if you have those on board. The problem is I didn't see a casserole in the first two turns. So I run that at a four of, but didn't see it, so I wasn't able to access the blocker. And I'm literally waiting for the Jiren that I have charged in my energy to be able to play it to put a blocker from my drop area back into play. And I forgot my tokens, so I had to go grab a random card from our box. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That there Jiren put in so much work early on, though. The promo Jiren. Yeah, absolutely. And it's still fantastic. I mean, it basically turns the core um, engine into like a 12-card engine to make Jiren viable to take no damage, which is a really awesome engine. I would say get those now if anybody wants to to make this deck because they're very cheap right now and they were very, very expensive back in the day. Yeah. Actually, everything in this deck with the exception of Xenocell is pretty cheap. And Xenocell is one of three win conditions. So you could even buy like the uh, Chilled from Draftbox 1 and that is also a good win condition. What SCR would you run if you didn't have access to Cell X? Probably Heroin's Lineage. And or, or Supreme Kai if I didn't have the Cell. To clarify, uh, because the blocker token was played off the uh, counterattack, Poutine was able to tap it. Yep. That's sneaky. Yeah. I forgot about that. But then he turned around and uh, activate battle to reset the Goku hit, and but playing hide and mastery allowed him to tap down everything, which will, made me have to use Hatchak. Oh, there it is. Yeah. We... Uh, now Hatchak cannot play because the leader, but all of its effects still go off. Yep. So it gets put in my drop instead because it never hit the battlefield. Which really sucks because I know I'm just going to lose hide and mastery now. Um, you know that's a pretty large investment for this deck. And it, it, it is really a lot. And theoretically, against any other deck, that would have been game, probably. But Hatchiak came in so clutch for you. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I think I, think I opened with, with Hatchiak, actually, if I'm correct. Oh, my gosh. Jeez, I opened Cell, so I can't complain. Hatchiak 
has to be the most demoralizing secret rare. It can be, yeah. Like, Cell X feels horrible, but nothing feels worse than thinking you're about to win and realizing you're about to lose. And so, no. I play a boonie, um, and I just feel like putting the, pull the cards on my warp for the tokens. Um, but this will allow me to, with this leader, stand two energy potentially now, every turn, instead of just one energy. And also notice the state of Bancroft's board by comparison to mine. Um, the big things to point out there are the three active tokens and the, um, the two blockers. So where my deck isn't really designed to try to clear his threats out, those blockers are putting in a exceedingly increased amount of work against me. And there was no I have, Yeah, I have the ability to play Zeno Cell this turn. And it's all about can I tap down the leader's effect or get him to use a blocker? So I believe here I bait the block with the Goku hit. Take it. You do some janky stuff. I'll, I'll give you that. I, I, and, and I think this is that three-card Zeno cell play that I was talking about. So I think you're going to play Goku. You'll swing with Goku. I think you Zamas. No, you play uh, Apes. And you... Uh... I think on the tap effect, I play the blocker Bardock. And I play the um, Bergamo. I believe. Oh, that's right, because, yeah, yeah. I forgot he taps a card, so yes. Yeah. But like you said earlier, like, if you weren't playing Jiren, I f this would have been such a quicker match, in my opinion. Oh, it would have been. You would have killed me so much faster. And but if I wasn't playing Jiren, I wouldn't be playing. Oh, for sure, you would have been playing something else. It would have given me a lot more trouble. Like I was actually afraid to go up against either Jake or Jimmy this weekend because they were playing green. I'm like, ah, well, dormant potential just stop my flooding the board. And both those decks, I do know, have uh, board wipe cards. Yeah, um, I'm sure you guys will tune in and catch those decks later in the week, won't you? Right. Yeah. Well, one of them is already you dropped. Can... Oh, well, your match with Jason. Also... Oh, true. But hit subscribe if you want to see Jimmy's deck later in the week. Yes, sir. So this is. So we. Have... I'm expecting a ton of negates here. Um. So what happened there was Bancroft sparking, but had overwhelmed the turn before, so didn't have the cards to spark. Realized it, so resituated. So basically now he's going to have to combo cards and and then put cards and build up towards that spark in yeah. here. And which you were expecting honestly, me to combo a lot. Honestly, I think it worked out better in your favor this way mm -hmm. because it lets you space out the attack. And like we just seen, you had just used two negates. Had I played Cell here, had I just immediately played Cell, I think I could have killed you. It's quite possible, yeah. I, like, I did... instead of just instead of just baiting all this out, I think I could have just killed you. It depends on what you hit, because I do have a key card which comes in handy, and you're about to see it pretty soon. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also, I was so determined on getting draws as soon as possible with this deck because. We did do a practice game before this, and my previous experience with 21, there was a lot of issues with hand. Like, a lot of cards get to play cheaply, quickly, for free, and my hand size was constantly being dropped down. So adding so the overwhelm... Say what? Holy shit. Yeah, fuck, I hit pull two negates. He's good I, at that. I hit two freaking negates, and you still have two negates. Yeah. 
So I did the now, magic three sand energy and turn around and play the other one have a block in case you want to attack a third time. That's that the is, most painful thing I've seen. Yes. Yes. I I was like crap. Because look at Bancroft's field. So he's got a hit that is now going to be able to restand next turn. We'll get one attack through, restand, and we'll get two blocks the turn after that. He then also has an Android 16 blocker that will be a block. So I have to work through two to three blocks the next turn just to be able to get to his leader, not factoring combos. And at this point, I'm pretty sure Bancroft has the game because I, my, I used a lot of resources to put that cell out. Out of curiosity, would you run Awaken Power? I know you have access to one. Um, yeah, you actually, you absolutely could. Um, it it definitely the problem is is that when you the longer that a game goes, I think the worse that Hide of Mastery becomes. Kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would um, agree with that. And and so you know you want to play Hide of Mastery on turn four if you can in this deck, and that just doesn't leave you an open energy to go into Victory Strike. And then Height of Mastery has Deflect, but does not have Barrier. So it's very susceptible to forms of removal. I, I was just curious. I, I mean, because I know you have access to one. I, I know a lot of people don't right now for obvious reasons. Um, but I was curious if just Cell X was just a better card in general. I think it is probably better. Because, like, an Ape and a um, Height of Mastery makes Zeno Cell. So if you had an eight priorly on board, and then you needed to just make sell, it, it's just super easy. It's just to right like there. Going, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Okay. And I will say this deck is so consistent in that regard. I played. I don't know. I played four or five games on Saturday, and every game I was able to establish sell. Every game, and then. Four of the three games I played Hide of Mastery, or three of the five games. So it, it plays Hide of Mastery. It's very consistent. It's, you know, the worst thing would be if like Zeno Cell is in my life, but I also play the other two win conditions. You know, so if I can survive till turn five and I've got enough Universe 11s, I've got the Jiren to fall back on too. So you'll see one of the four win conditions. And you run enough gas and pressure in this deck that if you're ignoring your opponent's battle cards, and like Bancroft has an extreme amount of removal and defense in this deck. Do you think a version of this deck exists where you play more control and focus on a awakened power type strategy? Um, yeah, there absolutely could be. Um, I think one of the things that might happen in that situation is the go-off turn would be something closer to, like, turn five, where you just sit on Path to Greatness until turn five. Turn four is an incredibly reactionary turn. And I definitely see with set 13, this deck becoming a lot more consistent because you'll gain access to the Trunks Unison that can blow up rest mode cards for three. That's going to be huge. Yeah. It's going to be really huge for decks like Topo Lock, Jiren, Mecha Frieza. It'll just give them a level of field control that they haven't had before. So I'm I'm sitting here looking at Bancroft's like 13 card field or whatever <laughs> the, the hell. Of... <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, I cut that down by half because of what I'm playing. So here pressuring, I'm swinging, he blocks. I turn off the skills to his Goku hit. So he can't activate blockers on it. That, that eliminates the number of blockers that he has. And I just have to try to pressure as much as I yep. can. And that, I would... Uh, I always forget about it. Either Unless I'm playing YOLO or I'm playing Gids, I completely forget about um, Vegeta's Final Flash. Because I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. I think I even said, like, that may have just got you the game, man. Like, I still have, like, I think 10 cards in my hand. And I think you have, like, 6 so I still have a chance. Uh, and of, I'm, it, yeah. Getting rid of a, a double blocker just hurts so much. Yeah. And then I hadn't drawn for Bardock yet, so there's my draw for Bardock. Um, 
And now it just comes down to can I combo through? So now I'm going to just tap down what I can, play the game that I can, and I think I go all in here. Yeah, you you up to 65, I think it was. Like so, so you said sixty, and I'm like sixty. And you're like mm, sixty-five, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> My, I, I was considering leaving the Bergamo, and then I was like, fuck. I think he uses the Sama super combo. If I leave the Bergamo, don't combo with it. I'm not gonna get the swing with it. I was you're hoping you all would. Value. Yeah, I think he even said I was like, yeah, I was gonna tap your Bergamo, but you comboed it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you got like I got I got to sixty thousand and you were at sixty five if correct. Wow. Yeah. That's the grossest game I've ever watched. <laughs> Dude, it, it it honestly like I I will be man enough to admit that I have talked some major crap about Android twenty one and I think Bancroft has finally got it revived to where it's actually it's a really aggressive slash defensive strategy depending on what he needs it to be. And so my question it's just good like is 21 the new prison bancroft uh i mean nothing will take my heart away but uh <laughs> it, like fluff said earlier um i have three of the goku hits so it's potentially six blockers right there depending on who i'm playing it's obviously if they could get rid of it they could get rid of it um i have two of the uh chills reinfor- reinforcements i think it's called which creates a blocker token those are so good. People are sleeping on those out of Evolution Booster. Oh, like, yeah. Do not sleep on how good those cards are. Every color got one. They're all good. Uh, three of the free play 16s that are blockers. If you uh, have an energy placed in your drop. And then as a tech choice, I picked two of the, was that Goku Vegeta Negate? That plays in rest mm-hmm. mode. But if your opponent attacks you later again, you can send to the bottom of your deck. To give you a leader five thousand uh five k boost, and if I combo that with the eighteen one drop, I shuffle my deck and I have a chance of seeing that negate again. Now, how how good was that card? Truth be told, or- I charged as you saw, yeah. and I charged it again in another game because the other cards are just a little bit better. Yeah, I I think that part of the refinement of that deck is going to equal out to be taking those out in favor of supplementing probably the more aggro style of the deck. I, I think that that Goku and Vegeta card is fantastic, but it's only fantastic in blue decks that don't require Sensu Bean. Uh, where if you're a ramp strategy that's going to have enough energy to expend and not have to worry about energy manipulation, I feel like Goku Vegeta is a much more valuable card in your deck than Sensu Bean. Um, but there's those are very few and far between. I think SS4 Vegeta is the only one where I would say you probably should run Goku Vegeta over Sensu Bean. Trunks as well because Trunks, yes because you can make Vegito off of that card as the Goku or Vegeta component. Mm-hmm. It as you all can tell um, in the video, neither me or Fluff played uh, Unisons in this deck, so that's why I didn't have the Trunks counterplay. That's why I didn't have uh, Heroic Prospect because I I don't think it really needed it as much. Well, that should be the title of the video: Unisonless uh, deck to or Unisonless duel i don't know two players no unison i don't know there's something in there what life was like before set 10 <laughs> yeah, there you go Th- there's unison and not having unisons i think it it illustrates perfectly fine that you know you don't have to run unisons in a strategy to make it competitive or viable right now you know the um red broly for example has not been running unisons doesn't have to it can, but it doesn't have to. But with that being said, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, like always, there's buttons. Feel free to click them. And Jake, last words. Uh, if you want to win, you have to practice. And if you want good practice, you got to try different decks. Tanner? Uh, remember, kids, sell X and hide a mastery sometimes isn't enough. Jimmy? I I don't really want to speak after that, but if I have to see you playing that bubblegum bitch again, I'm going to flip up the fucking <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Fluff, would you do it, though? 
that's fantastic, by the way. Um, Jiren profile coming for everyone that wants to see it. Um, but other than that, bubblegum bitch, read your cards, know your plays, let us make mistakes so you don't have to. Fluff out.